everyone! Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today with an episode of my series Use Your Books, which is a series about the fact that many of us have all sorts of books and magazines and maybe we've read them, maybe we got them for inspiration, but this is about really using them. So my series will <clears throat> cover a couple different things, sort of like the inspiration inside actually getting used and we make something, um, or actually using the magazine physically for something. So today it's going to be um, making use of an inspiration provided by this uh, Somerset Studio. This is um, volume 16, issue 6, from November, December 2012. So, yeah, we need to use these, right? <laughs> so, um, the artist profile in this one is DJ Pettit. Um, I will look up after this video if I can find information on DJ, and I will link it below in the description box because we're going to use this as our inspiration. So, um, I'm just taking a look at the overall like artist portfolio of this of this artist and I really felt inspired looking at their work. Um, so what I see is a lot of texture, a lot of layering, um, a lot of textile and you know so, lots of words. The colors are um, I would say um, you know, they're, they're tonal and whatever the focal point is, the colors are quite well matched to that focal point. Um, there's a lot of framing. And these are, are definitely my sorts of colors. They're cool and calm, but I'm going to twist this up a little bit today. Um, I also love the stitching. Like I like this stitch circle with the word snippets there. I'm going to like switch it up a little bit though, um, in that I want to use warm colors, which is not what I'm seeing here so much. This is more about cool colors. Um, but we're going to go with some of the techniques that this person uses to create a nice piece of work. So we'll set the magazine aside and what I have is literally materials that I pulled together in a couple of minutes um, from my scrap box next to me because I I think I need to start focusing on um, using things up specifically my scraps because I since making a few journals I've got a lot of scraps paper scraps and I always have a lot of fabric scraps because I do lots of fabric projects and then I have all this leftover so anyways what I have is this jelly printed leafy music paper <clears throat> and this is the focal point image that I want to use today I pulled that right from my Tuesday 10 bin for those of you who are like where's your Tuesday 10 video this week I'm sorry I I didn't get it done because I think I'm still kind of recovering from like junk journal July then vacation then coming back getting those artist journals done I'm kind of I'm gonna be a little uh loose for a while so yeah you're used to that with me right <laughs> so this is my image I want to use now I'm gonna start by sizing it down a bit because I'm looking at this in a way that I want to be able to use it in a journal um probably as either a folio page or like a you know the like a, a full coverage of the of the page so I'm going to get rid of this lion over here it it doesn't really appeal to me anyhow so this will be the shape of the ephemera <clears throat> and I'm also thinking about you see this unicorn I was thinking maybe how wide much wider I might use that on the back as like the writing space on the back because you know it is such a light piece so I will keep that here <clears throat> okay so if I refer again I'll just grab the magazine and I'll find the piece that I think I most want to you know make my own which I think is this so I'm going to need to create a background for this image uh, to give an extra bit of layering. And, and I like how there's like very scrappy, what looks like pillowcase and torn lace. So that's kind of cool. Um, so a background, let's work on a background. I need to get some paper here. So I actually have some like leftover parchment that I dyed. Um, that one might be good. 
And we're going to have to obviously do some stitching too. I love the spattering on this one, but let's see what else I have. Okay, and here's some like old book page. So I need like a solid, a bit of a solid backing to get started. And I may use a book page to do that from this book. I'm gonna use this as like my, my canvas kind of, I think. So, the first thing I'll do is tear this off here. And I don't wanna make this too, too thick. So I have to be careful with my layering because I'm not doing um, a canvas on the wall or the front of a journal, but I'm doing a piece of ephemera. So I'll just start with this. Then nice spattery part of that. I'm not stressing too much about like if I'm really well glued right now because um, I'm still building layers and there's going to be lots of stitching going on. <clears throat> okay. So first layer is that. Now I did grab some paint because I want to do a wash. Um, you'll see that while there's sort of imagery going on behind this, DJ Pettit uses a lot of like um, you know, dry brushing and wash type canvas work or um, painting. So, oopsies, I need to give that a squishy shake. It's just the, the joy of paint tubes when they separate. It's okay. That's fine. Let's get the excess paint off there. And then I want also to use, I, I've been pulling paints out that I haven't used in a long time, which is why you might be wondering like, why is our paint so weird? So this is another one, Modern Masters Metallic Paint Collection in Satin Finish um, in a Semi-Opaque Rose Quartz. So those are the colors that I grabbed. Very, very light. So see, that's a nice rose quartz. So. Maybe I'll just kind of move this around a little. And what I want is kind of a transparent feel to this whole situation. So just a bit of a wash. Let's see all the rose quartz. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's what I'm gonna use primarily. Go a little white here. You're not really gonna see most of this because it'll be under the image. I think I'll primarily use rose quartz actually. I may not even need that white. Okay. Okay. Now, where's my, there it is. Use this little lid topper to just put my brush on. Let's just move this out of the way. <clears throat> okay. So then I have the image that is gonna be the focal point and I'm trying to decide um, if I wanna do anything with it. I'm thinking about embossing it. Um, even though that's not really the look that this person uses, I was thinking about doing an iridescent emboss on it. Um, 
but I might not. I might just do some embossing glaze on what I put on top of it. Yeah, let's do that. So, I'm going to do something with this. This image, I just feel like it's too, like, flat or something. So, I need to do something to it, which is I'm going to spray it with a bit of coffee. Okay. And then um, we're going to just kind of smoosh it a little around. And then I'm going to take the excess paint that I've got on this brush. Which may or may end up doing something or nothing. Don't know. But it's an excuse to get messy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crinkle. Now this is a thick paper from an art book, so it's not going to tear or anything. But I'm looking to create kind of fine lines in it a little bit maybe, or creases to just, I don't know, rough it up a little bit. Because it, I don't know, red is an intense color that I'm often challenged by because I'm a cool tone person. And um, so I'm trying to find ways to challenge myself to hopefully get better at working with thread. Okay, now. All right, oops, I said this wouldn't tear. It did a little bit. Um, let's see, let's see. Nothing is lost, don't worry. Okay, now. Let's try laying this out. Now this might this might be a fail, we'll see. But see, I it doesn't matter because I have eight million things. So so let's do a assessment if we can still use this or if it's too crinkled. So one factor to think about here is that this was shiny paper. So shiny paper, it can kind of really need um like the details can get lost on shiny paper if you mess with it too too much but if i flatten it down let me take a look the, the main thing i'm concerned about is the faces if i can see the faces they're not too crinkled i see her face well yeah i see her face well too okay I'm just going to look at this up close. I'll bring it up to you. You can look too. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to decide if it's going to change after I get done with the sealing part. When I seal the whole thing in, if it will become more. Because see, like, I like how that looks in terms of, like, the crinkliness. Like, I wanted texture on this. Hmm. That's a tough one. Okay, I'm going to take a pause just so I can think and also grab another image that I might want to use instead. I need to work this out. Okay, so I've sorted out my problem and I think I know what it is. So I'm going to reuse this image for something different that I'm allowed to emboss it because I think it needs to be embossed. Um, so that'll be a different project. Why do I not want to emboss it for this? Because it just doesn't fit the overall feeling of the way this artist works. Her work's not like flashy and shiny. It's it's flat, it's modeled, it's it's painterly washed, right? So I want to try to stick with the inspiration. So I've chosen instead this, and this is not a shiny paper. This is a book page. Um, and I also think it will lend itself well to being stitched and embellished. It's round, which is another good challenge to have. Um, I like the colors. I think they're more true to the whole, um, the work. So let's play with this instead. Okay. So that's the thing. You're, you're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to change your mind. And I like to share those things with you here because, you know, otherwise you just think that the people you're watching on YouTube always have success. And that can be a bit of a letdown when you don't. Um, so yeah, I <laughs> spend a lot of time playing in my studio, making mistakes and learning from them. And I already just like this a lot more. Okay. 
Now, um, do I want to put it down now? Or do I want to do anything with it right now? And I think it's good to go down now. So let's move this over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. to take the wet pages out of there that I that I sprayed probably <laughs> or not who cares um okay so let's set this book aside don't need it right now now um the next embellishment that I want to do is with this so um even though the color you know is still it's now different than what I originally wanted to use I still want to use it because I wanted to emboss it I grabbed this um distress embossing glaze to emboss it anyways so I'm just going to cut the pieces out and this is um fossilized amber which I think will stand up nicely on this page so let's cut some for reform shaping here I think what I want to create is almost like a a bit of a frame, almost like a wreath over top, but not quite um, with this. Now I need to go in a lot closer to the shape that I want here. I'm just going in a little closer to those leaves and I'm also going to trim out the inside where the paint isn't and where like the bra branch would naturally have like negative space. Okay. So then I'm just going to lie that here just to get an idea. And this side, um, everything changes when you start to do the cutting in. It really uh, makes everything look less like a blob, right? So you can start to frame what you're doing better. this and then this yep 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 that's what I want okay and then I may also grab a little more of this You hear my kids bouncing around upstairs. <laughs> That's what they do. This one, perhaps here. And now I'm getting that effect I was looking for. Just cutting this out I know it's a little slow but it's okay it shows you the process right of redefining the shapes of things okay and then this one maybe would go here 
potentially here. Okay, yeah. So now I'm going to emboss these. So let's get rid of all these scraps. And I'll even just kind of wipe my paintbrush off a bit here so it can just sit here without this glazy paper. Get rid of most of the mass if possible. I seem to not have any more baby wipes. Oh, no, here we go. Vim wipes, that will work. <clears throat> they just shifted from their normal spot. <laughs> okay, get rid of all this paint. So we can make a newly defined kind of mess with embossing glaze. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to use this to emboss on. So where is, here it is, this, this, and these. Okay. I was watching a video this morning from uh, Bella Boo Creations. She's showing off her Tim Holtz 2023 Halloween haul. <laughs> and I've been saying like, I don't need any more stuff, but I think I might pick up a little bit. Um, I definitely want like the paper, um, the papers, the backdrops. They're really nice. Okay, so this stuff I've never used before, this glaze, but it's supposed to be, and I probably should have tested it first, but it's supposed to be like translucent, right? So I'm putting my trust in you, Tim Holtz, that you're not going to let me down. <laughs> it definitely has a different feel to the whole pigment. Everything is, it looks and feels very different. It's very thin. Let me set this on top of the paper. Here we go. Kids are playing with a marble track upstairs. So if you hear marbles rolling around. Okay. Wow, this stuff is so fine. <clears throat> Definitely don't have a fan blowing or anything that moves the air when you're using it. Okay. Alright, let's get the heat gun. Don't blow away, friend. Come back. Hmm. excess here. Then um, I'm going to pull the main piece off the book here. Put these up here. And I think I want to try to put a little bit of this 
is less wax on the embossing. Now it's going to get a little flat, um, which is what I want. I just want to tone the shine and that orangey color down a bit. And it will adhere nicely there. See, like you can see the difference there. Also, this stuff, um, it's iridescent, so it makes everything a little iridescent. Already liking these better. And this is Lilac Rainbow Sizzix um, Luster Wax, which is my favorite luster wax, and I don't see it many places, oddly enough. I especially love the gold. Um, I just had to order another one from the US because I don't see it anywhere around where I am in Canada, but that's okay. So now let's get the art glitter glue because we're going to glue down this. I just have to kind of reframe how I had this. So I think that was like that. This was here. This was here. And this was here maybe. Yeah. Those two are right. These ones I need to play with, the, the shape that I have. Let's just get these ones down and then I'll play around with the others. Also need to change the color of the thread that's in my machine before I do my stitching because I think I have like a, a grass green in there right now which is not going to work. When I look at her stitching she seems to use usually black, white, or brown like beige. So the stitching it can stand out or not, I think depends on how you feel about it, right? Now, how do I want these? I think I want to get rid of this. It's just a little too much. And also, maybe this. I just think they're going in too many wild directions when what I'm looking for is kind of a frame. So, let's do a frame. If I wanted to, we could do that with them. Yeah, let's do that. We don't need to waste these pretty embossed papers. Okay, good. Let's give it a bit of a flatten, flatten. All right. So now I think it's time to introduce the fabrics, the lace, the things um, that are going to make this a little more unique. So I pulled a few things for this and I'm just going to change one aspect. So I had pulled this color of threads for the other picture, but for this picture, I think I want something a little different, a little calmer. Uh, and I'm just pulling threads out of my ort. I'm going to pull these. They're more the colors I'm looking for. Okay, so first I think I need to do some stitching on the actual piece itself to add the first layer. So I'm going to stitch around and then I'm going to stitch probably parts of this circle as well. So I'll be right back with that. 
All right, so the stitching is done, the first bit. So I did two different colors. On the outside, I used like a chestnut brown because I do want like a nice kind of stitchery border that I can see. Um, and then on the inside, I wanted stitching. Um, but I used a lighter color so it wouldn't overwhelm the color of these, you know, the framing. Um, I, I didn't want to have to just stitch here and then stitch up here and stitch in there. Like I wanted to just go in a couple of nice circles without like really impacting the look of these. So happy with that. So now, um, I think next step will be to figure out how I want the strings to go. And so one thing I like, I do like how there's kind of like a long string that goes across. So what I pulled here were just some random threads and little bits of yarn. I might actually need um, something a little longer. So I'm just gonna reach behind me for one second. I don't think I have anything in my ort um, that's long enough. Oh, I might, hold on, I lie, I do. I do, I have this and it's perfect. So I think I'll just try to use maybe about, I'll go two, I don't wanna go too heavy. So do this and this. Oops, and then immediately tangle them up <laughs> with the thread, there it goes. Okay, so let's grab this. I'm going to lay it here. I'm going to lay the other one here too. But I kind of want them to hang a little messy. And I'm going to attach them in a weird way using masking tape. Because I think masking tape is going to give a cool look to this piece. This is contractor's masking tape. So once I lay it down, um, it's not going to be traveling around. It's... um more of a permanent masking tape. Okay. I'm gonna be stitching over this again, so no worries. Okay, so I've got the masking tape there. And then if we wanted to, we could rub a little bit of this iridescent on it. And then I can decide how I want these to be when I'm stitching. I think I might put like a little bit a little bit here maybe just for, for like a scrappy kind of and then zigzag over it but first I was looking at this so in this piece I like how she's used like a really what looks like a torn cotton pillowcase or something and she's used it very scrappy she's also used some like gridding netting type stuff and then some nice lace so I'm going to do things slightly different. Um, so I'm going to use some gold organza here as the piece that I want to use on this side. And I was thinking, do I want to trim this paper down a little more? Um, so if I were going to use this as a folio page, like I'm going to connect it with maybe washi tape to another page to be able to turn it, I would say no. Um, I don't trim it down at all. And I'm trying to decide if I would want to use this in the book I'm working on, um, which I might. Yeah, I think I will. So what that will mean is, you know, I've got to think about the thickness of it, right? Because it's now going to be a folio page. You don't want your folio itself to be super thick. But I think it will be a nice piece of art in my journal. And this journal is going to be an autumn academia theme. So I think it will go really well with that theme. I'm just going to kind of hand tear against the stitching. And at the bottom, I'm going to let a little bit of this just be thread. And down here, over here, I'm going to leave it alone because that's where I need to connect the washi tape. And then up here, I'll just take a tiny bit as well. All right, so we've got the shape for this page. Now, because I am going to be connecting this to another piece of paper, which I'll probably choose from, might as well just bring you into the whole project, right? So let's get a Tim Holtz paper for this, maybe. Um, okay, okay, I think I see something that might work. We're going to finish the piece, but I'm just going to get the paper first to, to see about how this is going to look. And I think I want to use this one. Yeah, 
that one. Okay. <laughs> this. this way. Okay. So I can move that out of the way now. We know what we're doing. So, um connecting it on this side which means the fabric that I want to use should probably go along this edge so I'm going to do a little flippy flip here like that that will get stitched on then why don't I do a couple of stitching stages and show you so I'll stitch that on and I'll do some stitching of this and then I'll come back all right, so that stitching's done. I added a little bit of the yarn cluster here and then a little down here in sort of the center of that wreathy um, part. And then I stitched this on. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a leaf stitch that I've used to attach it. So I'm happy with that. Now I had initially chosen white lace, but I'm changing my mind. And I also have this stuff and I wanna use a bit of it in a couple spaces here because I've seen her use a lot of gridding and stuff like in her in her work, she's got some here. Um, she, she uses the texture of canvas a lot by dry brushing, but you'll see it here too. She uses like a lot of texture. So let's do this, cut a couple pieces of this and then make it a little ratty on the end if I can and bend it a little yeah that's good oh that's so good all right I need art glitter glue for the back of it here because we want to stop it from fraying and also um, attach it <laughs> I'll put that right up here and the other one we want to do the same thing I won't make it as frayed. Just a little. I'm sorry, this isn't art glitter glue. This is three in one. Maybe here. Okay, and then um, instead of the white lace, I've dragged out this dress this lacy dress that I got thrifting a long time ago and I'm going to use a piece of it um where's the bottom here it is so I'm going to go back over and I'm going to look at my picture again now I know that she uses like a white cotton kind of lace and she she uses a lot of it but I don't want to really cover up a ton of my picture just a bit um so I'm going to grab from this trim at the bottom here take about maybe a length of three or four one two three let's go three we don't need a ton because this is quite a lace <laughs> I'll put it there then, I'm sorry if you hear my kids going cuckoo upstairs, my husband is vacuuming. So vacuuming in my house is a really big deal. My kids, like, they want to be a part of it. Like they, um, yeah, they really love vacuuming. So my son has our little like shark dust buster thing. And then my daughter's like taking turns with my husband with the main vacuum. So the Dyson's getting a workout too. Um, yep. <laughs> okay. And I think this piece of lace, I'm going to maybe try to scooch it under the yarn a little that I put down. Okay. I like that. So I'm going to stitch these on and then I think, I think that's going to finish just about the piece. I've got a couple more things I want to do. Okay, so I've done the stitching um, up the sides of this. Now, what I also want to do, untrap that yarn, there we go. I'm going to put glue um, on the back of the lace to hold it down in place because I didn't want to stitch on the image itself, just on the edges of the lace. So the glue will now hold down the rest for me. Okay. 
And we'll flip that over again, lay it down. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with this piece. I'm just gonna come in with one little continuity type step, which again is bringing in that painterly feel, a little dry-ish brushing in a few places. One on some of the lace, not all of it, just some. And this is a pretty transparent color, so I'm not too concerned, I'm overwhelming. A little on the fabric definitely over this. I don't want to keep the color of that burlapy stuff. I put it there only for texture. So we really want to fill that on up. And then again, the lace. Almost like the paint's just kind of like, you know, bleeding up the piece a bit. It's getting on a few things. Oops, we, we daubed a little here and a little there, but not everywhere. A little up here for balance. Okay. So let's set this aside and take a look here. So we have our piece and our inspiration. Um, I'll put that down so it's a little further from you. But I think I've accomplished what I was looking to accomplish. So this was a fun little way to use my books. Um, so now what I want to do with this, I'll, I'll bring you along, I guess, for this stage. Um, I want to make this into a folio for my journal. So let's just get the messy things out of the way here. Clean up is a part of the process. Just a quickie, put all the lids on all the things. So now let's create our folio um, and connect these pages together. So what I'll do is I'm going to, first I need to just double check the width of my book, make sure that it's all good. I know that one is. Yep, that one is too. Okay. So I'm going to just line them up beside one another and then I'm going to trim down this one because I know I got a little too much paper there. And then I also have to decide which, yeah, I'm going to do this and this together. I don't think it will matter anyways because they're probably going to be like not a center paper. Um, then I need to get my tape. I want to use this nice scotch Reuben washi tape. Um, I like this washi tape, but I got to say, it's not exactly like washi tape in that it does. So there's good and there's bad. So first of all, you don't need to add glue to it. It sticks like a tape. It's good, but it's not as readjustable as um, a normal washi tape. So it's actually pretty good for what, you know, I'm using it for, which is to bind these two pages together. Um, let's have to open it here. So this is a thick one and I'll just get the edge. And it is a little, um, when you first get started, it can be a little splitty until you get a bit of the tape off. I don't know why that is, but it almost feels like the tape gets a little more rubbery once you get into the second layer of it. I've noticed that. So it's almost best to just kind of pull off that first layer because it's not really reliable as a tape. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that here. flip it over and I'll decide if I want to bring up these sides. I think, yeah, I will. It'll add a little interest. I don't always do that. I often just trim them right off, but because this is such a collage -y kind of work and I like the colors together, yeah, we'll do that. Now this is, this work is not hundred percent dry yet, so I have to be careful. I don't daub my fingers. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. Now on this page, obviously you can choose to do what you want. You can cover it with paper, obviously. You can, um, you know, add some 
white gesso, whatever, some white paint. Um, totally up to you, but I'm going to just let this dry and be happy with it as the folio that I've made. I'm really, I think this will be a really nice piece of the journal. It's a nice piece of art. And if you wanted to, you know, I tend to be someone who likes to add like writing space to almost every page, but I'm getting better at allowing more inspiration pages in my journals. <laughs> so you could, if you wanted to put a little tuck spot down here, tuck a little thing in there for writing, or you could do a little, you know, flip up or flip down or something so that you don't impact that piece of art. But I think that most people would like to see something like this in the journal. I think this would be a really pretty folio first page, you know, like you're, you're opening the next folio and like, wow, you know? So yeah, this is a nice way. I like Use Your Books, this series I've done because it kind of is a series that allows you to just sit, focus and make a piece of art, like a truly a piece of ephemera that you've taken an inspiration, you're using up your material materials and you're you're making something really your own so I would love if you you know use this formula and have fun with it let me know tag me on Instagram if you decide to try it out I would love to see what you do um, I will as mentioned try to link DJ Pettit if I can find information about them obviously sometimes I I use publications that are quite old um, as a reminder of the publication I'm using it is Somerset Studio um, it is November, December 2012, Volume 16, Issue 6, and DJ Pettit is the artist profile that I am being inspired by today. So yeah, the only thing I didn't do, I think I didn't add any word snippets, which is like one of my go-to things, but I think I won't. I like it as is. So you have a wonderful day and we'll talk again very soon. Bye for now.